Hey everyone, I'm Han for the win, and recently I picked up one of these, an Oculus Quest, and I've been trying to figure out the best way to stream it using OBS to platforms such as Twitch, YouTube, and so on. So in this video, I'm going to show you the hardware that I've used and the bits that I've put together in order to do it. Now, out of the box, you can record your game footage directly onto the headset, or you can stream directly to Facebook. Unfortunately, other streaming platforms aren't supported. However, there is a software-based method to stream your footage directly to your PC. This involves sideloading additional software onto the Quest, and ours offers a hardware plug-and-play solution for streaming. So in this video, I'm going to show you the hardware options. All right, let's get to it. So this is the basic setup you can use to get yourself up and running streaming the Oculus Quest. So first off, you'll need the Oculus Quest on a 5 GHz Wi-Fi as close to your wireless router as possible. If your wireless router is at the other end of your house, for example, I suggest you're looking to get in a wireless access point that you can plug directly into the Ethernet and have very close to the Quest itself. So in terms of the Chromecast Ultra, although this does support Wi-Fi connection as well, I suggest you use the wired Ethernet to connect to your wireless router directly. This is to reduce the latency as much as possible. The Chromecast Ultra will need to be plugged into your HDMI splitter. This HDMI splitter also strips out the HDCP signal which is required for it to work with my particular capture card, which is an Elgato HD60 Pro. Now, not all HDMI splitters do this. You'll have to shop around and look at the feedback section of the various websites to find one that seems to do the trick. So what I also found is not all capture cards behave in the same way. My Ava Media 4K capture card, for instance, would only work if on the output side of the HDMI splitter, it was also connected to a HDCP enabled TV, as well as being connected to the capture card itself. The Elgato card, however, would work fine without a connection to the TV. So you'll have to experiment with your particular capture card to see if it'll work. I'll leave links below for all the items in this video so you can see the ones I've picked. Now this hardware configuration works fine for a basic streaming setup. Now there are some drawbacks and I'll explain what accessories you can use to get around it. So first off, the casting mode that comes direct from the Quest to the Chromecast Ultra. The audio itself is mono, and for some games this is fine, but for rhythm games such as Beat Saber or Pistol Whip, it doesn't sound anywhere as good as when it's been broadcast in stereo. I also think the quality is degraded, so I also recommend getting some additional accessories to make the broadcast experience better. First off, I'd look at getting a Aptex low latency Bluetooth transmitter that can plug into the side of the Quest. You'll also need an Aptex low latency Bluetooth receiver that plugs into the streaming PC so that the audio from the Quest can be sent to the streaming PC with low latency and in stereo. In terms of your microphone, I'd also recommend the Antline mod mic. I've used this on various headsets and attached it directly to some of my other VR headsets. The quality is really good. It's also Aptex low latency, so it's a great way of getting a good quality sound from your headset to your streaming PC. In terms of audio, you can use the speakers built into the Oculus Quest itself. However, the quality isn't so good. You have the option of plugging headphones directly into the headset itself. Now, this works fine, but you'll have to adjust the volume to cater for both the Bluetooth transmitter and for the headphone level itself. Now, the other option, which I think is better, is to get some low latency headphones. This will allow you to monitor the audio levels on your streaming PC, and it'll also let you hear for alerts in your stream, such as a new follower or subscriber, and also it caters for if you want to have text-to-speech enabled, and I'll go over two options in the next section. So there's two text-to-speech methods I recommend for VR streaming. The first one, speechchat.com. Now you'll need a Google account setting up with Google Drive for this to save its settings. This actually supports Mixer, Twitch, and YouTube. So what you can do here, once you've got it all set up, you can quickly give it a quick test. Ham for the win. Said test. And it'll say the user's name and the message. So you can go into settings here, into control panel. You can do things like change the preferred voice style. You go over to user groups. You can actually turn on and switch off different platforms for messaging. So I totally recommend you check out speech chat as one option of getting text to speech on your Oculus Quest for the streaming platform to use. So the other text to speech chat program you can use is the one that comes with restream.io. This is essentially a platform that allows you to stream to one location and then restream to different sites at the same time. So you can broadcast to Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, all at the same time. Now, if you download the chat application for Windows by clicking the button here, and then we've got the chat application loaded up, 
you can just go to settings, go up to notifications, and then under notifications, you've got enable text to speech, and you can pick a voice here. So the downside with this is that you've got to download an application and run it on your desktop PC. What I like with speech chat, it's totally cloud-based and you don't have to worry about having the application downloaded and saved. What is great with the Restream app though, is that it supports this thing called Relay. So what that essentially does is someone posts a message in Twitch, it'll relay that message to all of the other tick platforms and it works in the other direction as well. So they call this chat mirroring. It's quite cool and it means people on the different platforms can see the messages from other people actually in the chat window. The other method is you can actually overlay your chat onto the video itself. So once you've got the Chromecast Ultra set up, the first thing I suggest you do is check out the casting modes working correctly. So what you want to do is you click on sharing and you go over to casting. Now I'm already casting in order for you to see this video. Uh, so in this particular case, I've picked the Office TV Chromecast and hit start. Obviously can't do that because I'm running at the minute. Now what you should see is on the Chromecast TV, you've got it connected to it should display what you're seeing. So you now know you've got the Oculus Quest successfully working to your Chromecast. So the next thing you want to do if you don't have it installed already is to get OBS Studio. So if you go over to obsproject.com, then on the landing page, you want to click on the version that's relevant to your operating system. So in my case, it'd be Windows. You click on that, we download the application and then install it. So in this video, I'm not going to go into detail on how to set up OBS Studio for recording and for streaming. I'm going to leave some links in the description below for quick start guides that you can have a look at. I may at a later date do more of a deep dive on the settings that I use for streaming. But for now, I'm just going to show you the basic settings that you'll need to be aware of to optimize the broadcast stream for the Oculus Quest. So now that we've got the Oculus Quest successfully casting to the Chromecast, we're going to jump into OBS and look at some of the settings we can tweak to make the stream as good as possible. So the first thing to notice in OBS, the broadcast mix here is actually my GoXLR mixer. If you haven't got a mixer yet, uh, check out my review. I did a walkthrough setup guide for this. I think it's a great product and they've also recently released a GoXLR mini, uh, which is a bit cheaper, but essentially has the same mixing capabilities. The advantage with using a mixer is that you can monitor the audio directly rather than having to monitor the audio in the OBS, which I'll show you in a second. So the first thing you'll notice is that as I'm speaking, the broadcast mix level is going down. So I've got something called ducking enabled, which essentially means when the music's loud, it will duck the background audio, i.e. the music, so you can hear me clearly. I'll leave a link in the description below on how to set up ducking, but essentially all you need to do is you go into filters and you add a new compression filter. I won't add it because I've already got one here, which I've labeled ducking. You set the compression properties to what you want, and then you specify the sidechain ducking source, which in my case is the wireless mic. The other thing to note here is that the broadcast mix is using the Aptex low latency Bluetooth transmitter, which is on the side of the Oculus Quest here. You can tell the audio that's coming through is in stereo because the left and right channels aren't balanced. The Elgato Video Capture, which is the audio signal coming from the Chromecast itself, you can see that it is a mono signal because the audios are totally paired. So this is why I recommend you get one of these Bluetooth transmitters for better audio if you're going to cast the Quest. So one of the other issues you might encounter streaming or recording is the delay between what you're seeing on the screen and what's actually moving on in the headset. And also the actual webcam itself might be slightly ahead of the video. So there's a few tricks to what you can do here. So if your audio is out of sync, the first thing you can do is if you right click on any of the audio cogs, go to advanced properties, you can add an audio delay to any of your audio sources here. So in this particular scene here, we can see that if I move my head, it moves slightly ahead of what the video is doing. So what we want to do is on the webcam is add a slight delay so it syncs up with the video. If you right click the webcam, click on filters, and we're going to add a new audio video filter, and we're going to add video delay async. Click OK. Now by default it's zero, 
and you can increment this and it'll update the actual video in real time in the background. So if we say update that to 500 milliseconds, it's actually behind. So I know from previous experience, 100 milliseconds is pretty much spot on. So now you've got the webcam and the Chromecast video footage in sync. Now I'm actually hearing the game and the stream audio coming through on the mixer. If you don't have a mixer and you need to listen to the capture card audio directly, all you need to do is right click the video capture card cog here, go to audio advanced properties, Elgato video capture. And at the minute we've got monitor off. So all we need to do is click monitor and output and then we'd be able to hear the audio that's coming through from the Chromecast. So what I'll do next, I'll just finish off this video with a bit of fishing. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button below. And also check out the community Discord server I've put together. So if you've got any more detailed questions, just jump on there and I'll be happy to help you out. Okay, until the next video, bye for now. All right, let's cast off. Come on, fishy. Oh, we got one. Look at that fish.